All right, while well, we've got the last few folks jumping on the call, I'm just going to get started with some of the logistics. Uh, for tonight, my name is Jay Lisa Swain, and I'm the Director of Customer Experience here at Teamsy. It's important for you to know that I'm a really great resource for you. So no matter what you get out of tonight's call, I want you to know that you have someone in your corner. If you need some help, uh, just to sort of run the tech questions by. If you're thinking, I need to know I'm doing this correctly, or I need to know, you know, what are the right steps to take. You can always reach out to me directly, and I'd be happy to help. At the end of my presentation tonight, I'm going to share all of my direct contact info so that you will, in fact, be able to just pick up the phone and shoot me a text message or give me a call and be completely your option. So stick with me. Alrighty, so here's what I actually have planned for this evening. So I really want to make sure that you've got the right view of Teamsy so that you know that this is the right tool for you moving forward. So we're going to start with setup, because I know a lot of times that's the first thing that you consider is how am I going to transition my data over into this new system? So we're going to start by talking about setup. I'm going to give you some tips to really navigate that uh, process really simply and painlessly. So hang on, uh, hang around with me. After setup, we're going to jump into power hours, okay? Because the real benefit to having a tool like Teamsy is that it allows you to be more effective in the time that you have. So when you're trying to get, you know, your committed hour into your business every day, it's going to be important that you're not scrubbing lists or figuring out where you left off or any of that. And I'll show you how everything lives really neatly in, in the system. So after we talk about power hours, last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about follow-ups, okay? Or better yet, following up like a pro. So I'm going to show you how you don't have to manage an external calendar and a to-do list and your Excel spreadsheet and your post-it notes. You know who you are. So we're going to kind of see how everything uh, works together. We'll talk about how everything comes full circle. As I'm going through and presenting, I'm going to be just kind of pointing out different features that you should take a look at. Make sure that you're maximizing on this area because it's something that's really going to help you or be the most beneficial long term. Okie doke. So that's what I have planned for this evening. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into the call. Now, what you should keep in mind is if you do have specific questions or if you're thinking, I have a certain scenario I want to run by her, stick with me. I am going to open up the floor to questions at the end of that follow-up session. Okay? So we're doing setup, we're going to talk power hours, and then we're getting into following up like a pro in Teamsy. After that, we'll do a Q&A section, so go ahead and jot down your questions as we move along. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you now. Before I actually get started, okay, logistics wise, <clears throat> it's important that you each know that you have access to a free 30 day trial of Teensy, okay? So if you haven't taken advantage of that, know that that's on the table for you and there's no credit card necessary. So you're just sort of stepping in and you get to really see if this is a tool that will benefit your business. Because I know everyone does it a little bit differently. So it's important to know, does this have the tools that I need? Is this actually um, a time saver as opposed to, you know, a time uh, suck? <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, all of the different features, like I mentioned, that will kind of really help you maximize on the time that you do spend in Teensy. But really give in to that 30 days. It's the best way to know, is this going to be a benefit to my business so that I can make the investment? Okay? 30 days is what you need to build that habit. So. Without further ado, let's start by talking about setup. When you're transitioning into a new system, we know that you're gonna be considering a few different things. Um, maybe that you've got lists in multiple different locations. Uh, like you've got a Facebook list, and then you might have one in LinkedIn, uh, then your Pulse back office. Not to worry, Teamsy is designed to have those different files get consolidated into one master list. Okay, so I'm going to show you some different things. We're going to talk about the order in which you import. So make sure you've got a pen and paper just so that you can jot some things down as we move forward. All right, when you get started with Teamsy, the setup wizard is going to just sort of unfold for you. It's the first page that greets you in Teamsy. If you've been clicking around and you've been just sort of familiarizing yourself with the system, you can get back to the setup wizard by clicking the little wheel in the upper right hand corner and then you'll come down to settings. I'm sorry, you'll come down to setup wizard. I apologize, sort of autopilot just then. So once you click on setup wizard, it's gonna bring you to our three-step setup process, okay? So step one, we're actually going to begin by setting an income goal. So this has gotta be one of the first elements that defines Teensy or kind of sets it apart from other systems, is that it's not just designed to be a tracking app. It's not just an organizational tool. It is those things, but so much more. At its core, Teensy is a lead generation system. So it's designed to help you systematically go after your goals, 
okay? To systematically be conscious of the fact that you need to be adding new people to your, uh, to your database every day. You've constantly got to be generating new leads or introducing new people to the products and services that you offer in order to build your business. So that is the underlying or the fundamentals, the cornerstone that Teamsy is built on. So step one, we're gonna create a 12 month income goal for ourselves. So you wanna consider where do I wanna be 12 months from today, okay? If you're already having a killer 2017, Get in here and consider, you know, maybe I could uh, get a little ambitious. I can go for my stretch goal. Or maybe this is that time of year where you're thinking, I need to course correct. I've got to get back into the swing of things. I need to get serious about the business again. This is your first step in that direction. So step one, we're going to create that income goal. Step two, we're going to create a powerful why statement. So many of you are familiar with the concept now. Uh, the powerful why is, is very widely used in personal development. And honestly, the reason is because anytime you want to make an outward facing change in your life, okay, when it has to do with your business or the way you look, and it has to start internally with the self-talk and the self-influences. So we're giving you the opportunity to build a tool into your every day, a reminder, okay, to you of why you got in this business to begin with. Why should I push through a challenging moment? Why should I persevere right here and right now? Okay, so that's step two, the powerful why statement. Step three is going to be the meat of setup, okay? This is going to be where we import those contacts. So stick with me and I will have different tips for you for navigating that process. But in any case, let's take a look at what that looks like in real time. So setting your income goal in Teensy, like I mentioned a moment ago, you're going to consider it on a 12-month basis, okay? So this is not monthly, this will be a full year. The next thing that you want to consider is that this is not just a pretty placeholder, okay? This is going to be the number that we use, okay, or Teensy in the background to calculate the number of highly productive activities you need to do every day, every week, every month, and ultimately every year in order to stay on track with that income goal that you've set. So this is not just something you're gonna glance over at, this will actually start to drive you toward your goals. So give that some real thought. Once you're satisfied with your income goal, you can hit continue in the lower right-hand corner. Know that your income goal can always be altered. So I know some of you uh, might get started now, but then you're thinking, oh, I'm really starting to pick up speed and I can, you know, I can up my goal a little bit. I can challenge myself some. Not to worry, you can always come, in, come back into your setup wizard and alter your income goal and the system will alter all of your um, highly productive activities right along the way. Alrighty. So let's say that I've established I want to make $100,000 in 12 months. Okay, so Teams, Teamsy lets me know it's going to take a first, its first swing at my goals. So it lets me know, okay, to make $100,000, you need to connect 2,899 times. Okay, so for some of you, that initial number might seem like it's high, especially if you've got an ambitious goal. But I want you to stop for a moment and consider how many people you already connect with on a daily basis. Okay, got that number. <clears throat> now figure it on a weekly basis. Okay, now monthly. If you were to calculate the number of people that you're already connecting with on an annual basis, the number would be staggering to you. You are taking an intentional approach. You've decided to set your eyes on the prize. This is what I need to do to get myself from A to B. So I understand though, if you're looking at that initial number and you're thinking that's a, that's a lot, that's a lot of connections. Hit continue and Teamsy is going to actually break that down for you into bite-sized chunks, okay? Because a lot of times when you're trying to achieve a lofty goal or an ambitious goal, you need to have feasible milestones that get you there. You need to be able to know, okay, where do I put my foot next so I don't fall off the path, okay? So Teamsy lets me know, $100,000, okay, that's 2,899 connections in a year. But really, that only breaks down to about six connections to my prospects four to my customers, and three to my consultants per day. Well, that I can do, that's no problem. Bite-sized chunks, that's what you're looking for. So Teensy is now established for you your overall goal based on your income. And then it let you know, okay, this is how many connections need to be done for prospects, how many need to be done for customers and consult <clears throat> excuse me, and consultants. So what you have the opportunity to opportunity to do is actually take a look at these goals and say, actually, you know what? I want to connect with 
10 prospects every day, or my team has a goal of connecting with 15 new leads every day or 15 prospects, whatever your process or whatever your dynamic is, you can actually customize your goals accordingly. So like I said, if you're looking at the goals and you're thinking, I do that before breakfast, Jay, no problem, get in there and you can sort of uh, challenge yourself a little. Okay, now with these goals, these are connections toward your prospects, customers, and consultants. Now, Teamsy is also going to set a connection goal for your daily invites and your daily ads. So I'm gonna to talk to you about each of these categories. And I do see a hand uh, up on the list, so keep in mind I am gonna go ahead and address any questions um, at the Q&A section at the end. Okay, so for your daily invite goal, Daily invites are basically going to be intentional calls to action, okay? Anytime you are working with a prospect and you invite them to join you for an event or a three-way call or you send, them, um, a, uh, you send them a solution tool, anything that basically calls that person to action is going to be your opportunity to track that as an invite, okay? So you're going to go in and you're going to actually alter your daily invite goal. Do you have a goal as a team to send out three invites every day, uh, to send out five solution tools? Whatever the case is, you can come in here and actually reset your goal. Okay, so you've got your daily invites. Then you've got your daily additions. Daily additions, because Teamsy is built as a lead generation system, is just keeping your eyes on that focus. Have you introduced anyone new to the products and services that you offer today? And if you have, it's going to track that so that you know you're consecutively building your team. Okay, so that's how you're going to alter your goals. Um, I do see one question that jumped in the chat. I'm just going to quickly address that really, um, really fast. These goals are based on a seven day week. Okay, Monday through Sunday. All right, so we're going to hit continue here and we're on to the second step in the process, which is just going to be finding your powerful why. If this is something, if you're struggling for motivation, you're just looking for a little inspiration when you're writing your own, the video on this page is really great. Our creator and founder here at Team Z, Eric Johnson, shared his process, okay? The real why that got him out of bed, that got him his wheels spinning, you know, blood pumping, and his real reason for creating Team Z and bringing the team on board. So if you're wondering, you know, how did, how did this all happen? Or, you know, what does a powerful why really sound like? Go ahead and, and give that video a listen. When you're ready, you can hit continue and the system is gonna take you through creating your powerful why. So even if you've never done it before, just give in to the system. Uh, why did you become a consultant? What did you hope to accomplish? With each question, your powerful why will deepen, okay? I remember when I first looked at this, I was thinking I'm just not um, overly creative. I'm not that girl whose words are going to inspire anyone. This seems like it's lost on me. But then I started to answer the questions, just one at a time. <laughs> Why did I become a consultant? Or for me in that case, a coach at the time? Uh, because I was, I was hoping to make a little extra money a month, a little more money every month. Why, what did I hope to accomplish? A savings account seemed like a good place to start. Uh, why was that important to me? Well, I married a Marine, straight out of college. <laughs> and I thought, financial freedom, a community of my own, your why will begin to deepen. It starts to take the shape it needs to so that it can speak to you. This only needs to be powerful to you. So give in to the exercise, okay? You'll be, you would be so surprised how beneficial this tool is. All right, so once you get to the bottom of your finding your why, if you're thinking to yourself, Jay, I answered all the questions and it's not on the dashboard. Okay, what you wanna do is go back to your setup wizard. What happened is you answered all the questions, awesome, okay? But you actually need to take the answers to the fields above and actually fill them into the my why section there at the bottom. So if the my why paragraph at the very bottom is blank, you wanna actually enter your answers in that field at the bottom. And then when you're satisfied, you'll hit continue. Okay, and we are on to the meat of setup, okay? So, Grab a pen and paper, okay? I'm going to give you, we're gonna start with the order in which you should import your contacts into Teamsy. Now, like I said, we know you're gonna be bringing in files from LinkedIn, then one from uh, Facebook, then one from your Pulse back office. Not to worry. What you wanna consider is how you import them. Did I start with my customers or did I start with my Facebook list, okay? So you should import your contacts in the following order. 
You're going to start with your pulse, customers, and consultants. You are going to start with your pulse, customers, and consultants. Once you've got those loaded, I want you to move on to any of those custom spreadsheets that you may have created. Okay, you know the beautiful ones with the color coding and the next follow-up date and every last note you've ever sent that person. Fantastic, okay? You have spent the time accumulating that information. Let's bring it into the system so you can put it to good use. So we're starting with customers and consultants. Then we're going over to those custom spreadsheets. Then I want you to bring in your email services, okay? Um, Gmail, Outlook. Uh, 365 versions, um, there's Spark, all different types of email services. Uh, many of them are compiling an address book for you. So you have the option to export that data. A lot of it's really good. It'll be, it'll have a phone number, email address, if you've corresponded with that information before. So take a look, okay? Um, if you need help exporting from Gmail, from Outlook, please reach out to me, guys. I've been working in this industry for almost 10 years now, helping people either support or create systems like this. I am aware of the instructions um, if they exist for your system, so I'd be happy to help, um, help you export those contacts. So we are starting with our Pulse customers and consultants. Then we're gonna bring in custom spreadsheets. Then you wanna bring in your email services. Once you bring in your email services, I want you to focus on LinkedIn specifically. LinkedIn. Okay, so the reason that I mentioned LinkedIn, okay, even though it is a social media-ish platform, is that you have the opportunity here to collect great information from LinkedIn connections. Things like phone numbers, email addresses, where they work, their current title. That's information that other social media platforms like, say, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, you're not able to pull that information because of privacy policies. So leverage your LinkedIn connections if you have them. If you need instructions for exporting from LinkedIn, reach out to this guy and I'd be happy to help. Alrighty, so we're going customers and consultants from Pulse. Then we're gonna bring in our custom spreadsheets. Then we're gonna bring in our email services. Then LinkedIn specifically. Once we have hit that, those top four, once you brought in the, the, the real meat of your data, then feel free to bring in Facebook if you're, um, and if you're creating a file for Instagram. So, Facebook, there's a little video here that walks you through the process of exporting your data from Facebook. However, Instagram. Instagram does not currently allow you to hit export and pull a list of all of your followers. It's just not an option right now. So what you can do, however, is you can compile a manual list if you want it on an Excel spreadsheet, um, or you can add them, you know, little by little, uh, one at a time into Teams. Okay, okay. So, Facebook last, okay? But other than that, as long as you bring in the other files, um, that'll be the best order to import your data into Teamsy. The reason that I just made that recommendation, okay, is because Teamsy has a duplicate filter built in, okay? It has a duplicate filter that's searching for unique email addresses. So every time I add a list, it's screening the names that already exist in my database. And it's letting me know, oh, okay, you know what? These five people already existed, so I kept them out, and I brought in only the new contacts. So every time you add a file, keep in mind that Teamsy is going to scrub that down for duplicates by unique email address. Some people use different email addresses, okay? You may have a few people that, say, use one email to sign up with you as a customer and then use another email for their LinkedIn. And then in that case, you may, not, you may end up with two contact records. In that case, I'll show you in a few minutes how to quickly merge, uh, kind of clean that information up so that you can delete your duplicates. Okay, so we talked about the order and we talked about the fact that Teamsy is going to search for duplicates. Something that you guys wanna keep in mind also, anytime that you're importing files into Teamsy is going to be the uh, format that you import uh, into the system. So if it's a Facebook file, it's a-okay. If it's a Pulse back office file, it's a-okay. Any other files, so those custom spreadsheets you may have created, uh, your email services, you just wanna make sure that those are in a CSV format. So comma, separated value. This little video here at the end will actually show you how to take those files and import them into Teamsy, but I'm gonna show you how um, in real time. So let's hit continue here. 
And when you're ready to actually import your files, Teamsy is going to have a little reminder that lets you know what file formats are acceptable. So, you know, you don't have to go frantic about what did Jay say. Um, and then if you're thinking, I have no idea how to check a format, Jay, <laughs> no worries. You can just select the file and Teamsy will tell you yes or no. Okay. So let's say I'm going to choose my file here. <clears throat> So Teamsy ran that initial screen and it lets me know, okay, I have a green check mark, this file can be successfully uploaded. That's what you're looking for, okay? If you're considering, is this format appropriate? Can I bring in this file? Just select it and Teamsy will tell you yes, or it'll give you the little red X or the, the little spinning wheel of doom. And you can always stop at that point, give me a call and I'd be happy to help, or you can just check the format. Okay, no. so the next thing that you wanna consider when you're importing contacts, is that you're almost bringing in batches of lists, right? I've got my Facebook friends and then I've got my LinkedIn and um, you might have, you know, a custom list of everybody that you sent a solution tool in May and June or whatever the case is. If you've got like batched lists like that, what you can do is actually select advanced import options here and you can tag your entire list to say, okay, you know what? This is a list of my Facebook friends. Or, you know what, this is a list of solution tools for June, okay? You have the option to create as many tags or as few as you'd like. Tagging at this point in the process allows you to add that tag to everyone on that file. So if I have 100 names, each and every name will have that tag associated. So let's say that this is simply a Facebook uh, list. I would tag it as Facebook. There are prospects for now. I'm gonna hit continue. And the system lets me know that it automatically mapped my file. It put the phone numbers in with the phone numbers, email addresses in with the email addresses. Okay, so I'll hit continue here. And the system is going to start importing those contacts. And it just basically moves me through to the next step in the process. Because even though you've done the meet, okay, you've done, you've set up your income, you've created that powerful why, and you imported your contacts, there's still a little bit more information that Teamsy needs in order to help you stay in contact with every single person in the database in time. So what I mean by this is Teamsy is actually going to allow you to assign a default follow-up to every single person in your database, okay? So you're gonna take a hard look at every prospect, every customer, and every current consultant, and you're gonna say, you know what, this person is a five-star, or someone most likely to become a customer or consultant, or an existing customer or consultant that is a rock star, someone I wanna connect with every 30 days like clockwork, okay? So that's the default follow-up. You wanna keep in mind that's the most important part about ranking, is you, are able to actually customize who you connect with and when or how often based on their priority. So my five stars are going to come up for follow-up every 30 days like clockwork. My four stars every 60 days. My three stars <clears throat> every 90 days. And my two stars every 120 days. So the further down the list you go, the further out this, uh, the follow-up cycle will be. If you're thinking to yourself, um, I, I'm not, I might not remember that, or if you need to get back to this breakdown to kind of remind yourself of where everyone falls, you can actually click rank at the bottom of that page when you're ready. This is gonna redirect you to the easiest page to do the ranking or the prioritization process, which is basically gonna give you a list of all so this is every single person that has been manually added or imported. They'll be listed here. If you're wondering how many people is that total, how many people do I have in my database? To the right of the word all here, if we follow it along to the right all the way, you'll see a total number of contacts in the upper right-hand corner. That might be faint gray for you guys right now, but it's in your system, I promise. Okie doke. So as far as getting back to that breakdown, uh, you know, how often do my five stars come up? How often do my four stars? you're gonna click the little question mark to the right of the word all, and that's gonna give you that breakdown. It lets you know the 30, 60, 90, 120 day windows. Okay, so when you're ready to rank, like I said, the system gives you your list of names. You would basically go down the list and attempt to cherry pick, okay? Because I know some people are gonna kind of jump out at you where you've got a great relationship with them and it's super simple for you to change their rank or tell the system what they mean to you. 
but sometimes those lukewarm prospects through Facebook or Instagram or what have you, uh, those might be a little harder. So don't agonize in this moment. Please don't get stuck here, okay? What you have the opportunity to do is actually go in and cherry pick your four and your five star ranks, okay? So go through and try and pick out the people that jump out at you. Who has the best relationship? Find the people you wanna connect with most frequently. So you know what, Marlo is a four star. Oh yeah, Laura is definitely a five star. And it'll be that simple. Team C is gonna do an automatic save with you as you progress down that list. If you come to a name that you're thinking, oh, you know what, Rachel should be a two star. Uh, you can always go further down the list. Something to keep in mind is that everyone starts at three stars, okay? So everyone starts at a three-star ranking. This means that it's kind of a safety net that's been applied to every single person in your database. So even if it takes you a little bit of time to get in there and start building that momentum of ranking everyone, Teamsy is not gonna let anyone fall through the cracks. It's just gonna start serving people up to you in that 90-day window. So you can start connecting and then start to sort of adjust um, their ranking appropriately. Because this is something that's gonna evolve with your business, it's always gonna be changing. So don't feel like you have to alter their rank right now. You can come back to it down the road, you'll have the option and I'll show you all the different ways that you can do it in Teensy. So as I'm going through the list, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna cherry pick the people that jump out at me. Um, let's say I come to a name that I'm thinking, oh, you know what, for whatever reason, this person doesn't need to be in my database. To the right of the ranking, you have a little tiny trash can that's going to give you your delete confirmation. Once you delete them, that removes them outright from the database and moves the next name up the list. So that's going to be how you can quickly clean up uh, or remove people if you need to. That's how you're going to rank or re-rank. And ultimately, as you're moving through, you may come across a couple of names that are consultants on your team or people from your downline or too far up your upline that you don't need to connect with consistently, you know, monthly or bi-monthly or anything. But it's, it's good to have their information on file. Like, I, I'd like to have their info, but I don't want them to muddy my daily follow-ups or my daily connections. So what I would do in that case is I would make that person a one star. That means that they will not appear for automatic follow-up, but then if I want to search for them, I can. So that's my little tip for ranking, okay? Go through, cherry pick your four and your five stars to start. You can delete anyone directly from that page and you have the option to utilize that one star rank if you wanna save their information but not have a daily follow-up. Okay, doke. As you're going through and you're prioritizing in ranking, you are going to be adding information, updating details. So. Let's say if I clicked on Marlo here in, um, on the, if you click on any name in the list, this becomes their active profile to the right. So you'll see Marlo's name here at the top of this profile. This lets me know his ranking. If I come down far enough, I'll have a tagline. So that lets me know, okay, that's right, Marlo and I are Facebook friends. And then if I scroll down far enough, I'll see a follow-up line. This means, okay, Marlo is gonna come up for follow-up in 60 days because he's a four star. But you may be in a situation where you have that one of those great spreadsheets and it has a column that says, you know, next follow-up date. What you should do as you're going through and you're setting things up is just be conscious of that follow-up line. Let's say on my spreadsheet, it says I need to follow up with Marlo on Wednesday. I can click this little drop down, and then I can come down, you know, oh, I'm gonna connect in two days, in three days. Or I can select from the calendar and say, I'm gonna follow up with Marlo on Wednesday of next week. That now becomes the active um, follow-up date for that person, and it's going to automatically remind you on that date, okay? So know that you can alter your follow-ups as you're going through setup, okay? You can kind of post them in there for people that you have pending follow-ups for. And then you've also got your member types. So because you're bringing in a list from Facebook, from LinkedIn, there's no way that Teamsy can know if those people are already customers or already consultants. So once you've finished with your ranking, I recommend that you click on type mode. This is going to actually display for you everyone's current type, okay? So with that, you'll know, okay, Marlo is currently a prospect, but actually, no, he's, he's a customer of mine, so I'll move him over to customer. Um, okay, Laura's a consultant, uh, Rena's a customer, Melanie, oh, Melanie's a consultant, but you know what, she's, Melanie is a consultant, but she's not personally sponsored to me. She's a member of my downline. So I can actually stipulate that she's a part of my downline. So when I open this profile, I won't think, oh, I need to reach out with, to Melanie. Well, no, her directly sponsored consultant will reach out to her. 
Okay, so that's how you're going to sort of alter um, those uh, your member types as you move through. Above the list of names, you have rank mode, which is going to display everyone's active rank, and then you have type mode, which will display everyone's active type. This does an automatic save as well, so I can click down this list and say, oh, you know what, Becky's a customer, um, Claudia is a customer, and you would just go down the list, making the changes that you can, and then moving on to the next person, because this is going to evolve, and you're always gonna have the option to come back in here and make those changes. Okay, so those are the majors that you wanna focus on when you're getting set up, okay? How you're importing your files, if you've done that prioritizing or ranking process, and then have you cleaned up some of that information? Have I added the details that maybe I didn't have before? Uh, for example, if I'm working with Marlo and I can click on Marlo's name, it opens his active profile here. If I come down below his member type and consultant type, I'll see, oh, okay, you know what, I've got Marlo's email address, so I can go ahead and update that now. I can click in the field and make the change. And then you'll notice if I click anywhere else on the screen, it gives me a success message, letting me know I can move along to the next step and it's automatically saved for me. So keep in mind that you can add information as you're moving along, especially when you're consolidating down files. Oftentimes we think that we have more information because different pieces of information are in different locations, okay? So we're consolidating all of that down. You may need to go in and add some information manually as we get started, but it's that simple. Okay, other areas for information in the profiles, you have contact-based details, you've got social media links, and then you've got personal information like birthdays, spouses, children, pets, things like that. Anything that doesn't fit in these fields, anything that you're thinking of that might be a great note that will help you serve this person better, go ahead and check out the notes field. So I'm, right now I'm in Marlowe's profile. It's got me in the details section. But if I wanted to make a notation about Marlowe, I could click on notes. And now this lets me say, okay, you know what? Um, uh, sensitive skin, okay? You can actually copy and paste the results of your solution tools in here. Um, if you're at, like me, where you make a little note, you know, you've got that constant scratch paper when you're on the phone with people or connecting, just making notes about them. Um, this is a great place to make those notations to you from you. Okay, the client never sees this. This is just um, something that you can reference as you move forward. Okay, so the one thing I wanna mention here is your notes section does need to be updated. So don't just click away from that. Make sure you hit update so that you can save that information. Okay, your activity feed is going to actually keep track of every activity that you complete with that contact. So every time I connect with Marlo moving forward, it's gonna be listed right here in his activity feed. And that's gonna be ultimately your uh, profiles in a nutshell. But we will kind of circle back here. I'm gonna to touch on some more features in a moment, but this is the perfect time to talk about your power hour session. So let's head over to your dashboard. Now that you have spent the time setting up appropriately, you brought in your contacts, you've cleaned up the list, and you've told the system who is the most important to you by prioritizing everybody, you are now ready to lean into TeamZ for its power hour capabilities. And this is how you're gonna work um, the, the dashboard uh, or your virtual accountability partner, as I like to think of it, okay? So it's going to list for you your daily activities. So when you log in, this is how you're gonna read your dashboard. I have 10 prospects to connect with. The number below the type is gonna let me know how many I have left. So I have 10 prospects to connect with for today. I have four customers and I have three consultants. These goals are being pulled directly from that income goal that you set, remember. So if you look, if you log in and you're thinking, oh, you know what, my goals are way too low or you know what, those are, uh, those are too high for this specific category. You can always go back to your setup wizard, okay, by clicking that little wheel in the upper right hand corner or you can click edit daily goals here. In the upper right hand corner of your dashboard there, if you click on edit daily goals, it'll take you back to that uh, step where you can sort of uh, adjust things in the breakdown. Okay, so that's gonna be how you read your connection goals. But remember, Teamsy is also setting a goal for your daily invites and your daily additions. So it lets you know, okay, you've got three invites to send and you've got three people to add to your overall database. Okay, great, I know my marching orders. Now, instead of scrambling or scrubbing down lists or figuring out where I left off last with people, I can actually just scroll down my page 
and bring up what's known as my who's up next section, okay? Now this has to be, you know, one of those other elements that really defines Team Z. We are not only allowing you to set up your income goal, but you're actually also creating a tailored action plan for yourself every day. So I know I have 10 prospects to connect with. Team Z is going to list for me based on priority. So who has the highest priority, priority to me? So my five stars first, then my four stars and so on. My five stars who I have not connected with in their default time frame. So Eric Johnson is coming up on this list here because I have not connected with him in the last 30 days. So without me checking any lists, figuring out where I left off last, doing any of that, all of that information is directly available from the dashboard. Okay, so I know that Eric is the next connection that I need to make. What Teamsy does is it opens up connect section for you here. You'll see the person's name listed, and then above the, the actual connect box, above where you see the person's name here, you'll see connect. And then if you click on activity, this will list for you any activity that you've actually done with this contact. So if I had sent Eric any emails, if I had tracked any phone calls, all of those would be listed in an itemized fashion so I can scroll through and literally speak to our last point of communication. Or I can say, how did you like that solution tool? Because I can see clear as day that I sent it last Tuesday. These are going to be little features that help you sort of uh, get your time back. You're not having to stop and open other softwares or open your Excel spreadsheet or whatever the case is. So utilize your activity tab right from the dashboard. Then you've got your details section. So if you're looking, if you need uh, their phone number or if you're wondering what their birthday is, you can click on details and it'll actually show for you everything that you have for them. Do I have an email address? Looks like it. Do I have social media links? Do I have a phone number? Oh, great. It looks like I'm friends with Eric on Facebook. A lot of times when you're getting started and you're building momentum in a system like this, you might feel like, how do I even know this person? You know, sometimes those lukewarm prospects can throw you off and you're thinking, I don't know what to say, where do I start? These elements help you find your way in, okay? Um, going through your activity will let you know where you left off last with them. Going through that detail section will give you the opportunity to see, okay, have I tagged them as anything? Uh, you might see a tag that reads solution tool or it reads um, lash boost or specific regimens that they asked about or are interested in. You get to create as many or as few of those identifiers or tags as are needed for your customers or your prospects or your consultants, okay? So I can see at one glance without me clicking anywhere else that, okay, Eric Johnson and I are Facebook friends. I have a phone number and okay, great. It looks like I've got an email address. So you know what? I love to connect with people through Facebook. That's what I'll do. I'll send Eric a Facebook message. So I can come over here and click the connect section. Um, oh, you've also got access to your notes area if you need to. So you can always click on notes and that'll let you see any notations, like I mentioned, that you may have made about, about that contact to yourself. So that's available also. But then I would just click connect and I would jot down what we connected about. If I sent him a message, you know, if I had a specific message I wanted to send, or if I uh, left a voicemail or sent an email or anything like that, I could synopsize that for myself. I could say, sent solution tool, checked in about new granddaughter, whatever the case is. Or you can get in the habit of actually copying and pasting. I like the copy and paste method because then I know exactly what I've sent people. All too often I'll have someone that mentions a really vague email that I've sent them in the past. Or, um, oh, I'd really love to know more about that three-way call that you have coming up about. And it's like, oh, which one did I send out today? Or, you know, so, Tracking exactly what you send to people gives you a full frame of reference. It's a, it's a personal preference though, okay? So if, you, if you're one of those people that just wants to abbreviate or add a couple notes, this is going to help you serve people better in the future. So just sort of customize it to your dynamic. All right, so I would jot down what Eric and I say. But honestly, I have no idea what I want to say to him. I don't remember, you know, I could sit here and I could agonize over what I'm gonna to say to this new prospect or customer or consultant. Or I could lean into my system because a system like Team Z has scripts and dialogues built right in, okay? So in the upper right-hand corner of this little area, you have a script window. If you click on that, it's gonna open up a box that lets you choose how you wanna connect with this person. So do I wanna send Eric a quick Facebook message, an email, a text? And yes, we have scripts for each. So 
I decided I wanted to send Eric a Facebook message. I'm going to click on Facebook. And this is going to arrange for me all of our preset scripts. These can be customized by you. They can sort of, they're great uh, one-liners, ways to start a conversation. Um, they're not meant to be, you know, totally transcendent, life-changing, but it gives you a place to start. You're not having to stop and reinvent the wheel for every lukewarm prospect. So is it connect number one? Is it connect number two? You go over to the corresponding connection and look at that. Hi, Eric. It's been a while since I checked in with you. How are you? I hope all is going well. And then you can add a little personal adage or you can just send it off exactly as it is. It's completely your choice, but this gives you a starting point. So for those of you that might struggle with the follow-ups, you know, because we all know that magic number that most sales close between the seventh and the tenth follow-up. Not the first, the second, or the third like we'd like it to, right? Some do, but not all. So for those of you that might struggle with, you know, the consistent follow-up thereafter because you feel like you're nagging, lean into the system. We have follow-up number one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to follow-up number 10, okay? So this gives you the opportunity to just keep sending those messages, <clears throat> building consistently, starting to plant that seed that you're someone that's going to be present and available always for them, okay? So lean into your scripts if you'd like to. For those of you that are thinking, well, I've got some killer scripts that I already like to use, then go ahead and save those in the system and then you can reuse them in the future. To do that, you'll click on script, a uh, new script in the upper right hand corner. It's gonna give you a new script title. You can title it whatever you'd like, follow up to events, uh, checking in about solution tool, whatever the case is. You save it and now you'll have that in your list where you can click on it and just use it with anyone moving forward. So that's gonna be how you create your script. But let's just say, you know what, Eric and I, brand new, I just want to send him the first connection. So I'm going to go over to script. I'm going to click on Facebook. I'm going to select connect number one. At the bottom of that window, you'll notice that we've created a quick copy button for you. If you click there, it's going to highlight and copy everything for you. I can close that window. Again, I do a full copy and paste, but that's my personal preference. You do not have to. I'm also a little bit blind, so when I <laughs> paste my messages into Facebook Messenger, they're like that big, and it doesn't work for me. So I paste it in here, I add my little personals, you know, my hey girl, or whatever the case may be. I do another copy. I come, I usually keep my Facebook window open side by side just because it makes it easier for me. And then from here, I can find the person on the list that I want to send that message to. I paste, hit send, come back over to Teamsy. And then I would indicate here under select type how I connected with that person. Did I send them a Facebook message? Did I, make, did I give a call? Did I send them a text? This allows you to create almost a reference point for yourself of how people like to connect. So many of us do this differently. Okay, some people like email, some people like Instagram messages, some people like Facebook. You get to create your own trends by contact. So you can look at their activity feed and say, oh, you know what, they respond better to Facebook messages or they respond better to texts. So I'll say that's a Facebook message, okay? Now I'm not inviting Eric to anything, I'm not calling him to action, so I can leave that invite unchecked here and I would basically log that connect. This sends a message to my Teamsy that I have connected with Eric, so it removes him from my list of prospects. It sends a message to the dashboard that I've completed one of my 10 prospect connections, and it fills in my progress. So at any given time in the day, you can always glance over at your dashboard, and you know how close or how far you are to meeting those goals. So I know I've connected with another prospect. Okay, I've got nine more. I would scroll down and just keep connecting. So William is the next person coming up. He's a five star. And you know what? He's coming up because I have not connected with him in the last 30 days. So I can come over here, same deal. I can check his activity. I can check his details. Oh, great, looks like we've got an email, a phone number, um, an email, and he's my Facebook friend. Um, and I can check on his notes. Oh, you know what? This is the referral from Ben. I wanna give him a call. So let's say we're chatting about upcoming three-way call. Okay, so let's say that we get to chatting, we talk through different things, and I wanna invite Will to join me for a three-way call because I think he would just love these products. So, 
I can make, you know, make these notes as detailed or as not so detailed as you need them to be, okay? Notes to you, from you. Um, and then you can come down and select how you're connecting. So we spoke by phone. But you know what, I'm actually inviting Will to participate in something, so I can check mark that it's an invite. And this, there's an option for me to actually select the type of invite. So that in the future, you can pull a report that says, you know what, um, show me all of the three-way calls that I have, uh, three-way call invites that I sent out. Or show me all of the solution tool invites that I sent out. So those reports do exist in Teamsy. This is a really great way to track that. So it's a three-way call. And you know what, Will has to run right now, but I want to follow up with him tomorrow, <clears throat> pardon me, with all of the details and just to make sure that he is excited about joining us. So. What I can do here is I could log connect. That would mean that William's gonna come up 30 days from today like clockwork. But I wanna follow up with William tomorrow. Don't reach for your calendar, don't grab the post-it notes, okay? Set the follow-up right in their connect section in real time. In the upper right-hand corner, you're gonna have the follow-up drop-down. So this lets me tell Team Z, uh, 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 I don't wanna connect with them in 30 days. I wanna to connect tomorrow, or in two days, or next Saturday. You have the option, okay? In that moment, once I log the connect, this sends a few different messages to the system. It removes William from my list of prospect follow-ups. It updates that I've connected with yet another person. And it updated that I connected, that I sent out an invite. So all of that's being tracked in one fail swoop. So I'm not having to go in and track my invite separate from my, from the actual connection. All of that is creating information, uh, is creating a report that you can use in the future. So that's how you're going to track your invites and your follow-ups as you're connecting with people. Let's say that I have connected with all 10 of my prospects for today. I would move on to my customers. Okay, I've got four customers. I would scroll down to my who's up next list. But this time, I'm going to click on the customer tab. And now the system is going to filter only my customers by priority. So it's going to let me know, okay, you know what, Rena is currently the highest ranked uh, customer that you need to connect with. Okay, Rena's a three star, but you know what, actually, maybe I can make Rena a four star because I want to connect with her more often. So directly from the dashboard, you can go, you can click on their rank and you can actually change it. So I can make Rena a four star. That's going to move her up the list, okay, according to her default follow-up, and it's going to rearrange my, my names appropriate, <clears throat> excuse me, appropriately. So let's say I wanted to make Rena a two star. If I had done that, it would rearrange the list and put Rena at the bottom. If I make her a five star, it's gonna put her at the top. So it does an automatic save and readdresses that list for you, okay? So this is gonna be how you sort of alter your ranks directly from the dashboard. As you're moving along, you might come across someone, for example, let's say um, I know that Becky and her family went out of town for vacation um, and they're gonna be back in a week. If you need one week's time, okay, seven days, Go ahead and select skip one week to the right of the person's name. That sends a message to the dashboard to remove Becky for the next seven days and then bring her right back up the customer list so that I know to connect seven days from now. So that's a quick postpone for you or you have the option if you need to postpone them further than that to utilize their follow up window. Okay. So we have talked about some of the different features that you can kind of maximize on when you're getting into your power hours. Something else to keep in mind. You, uh, you cannot send Facebook messages through Teamsy directly. You notice that I went over to Facebook and I actually pasted the message. Uh, the same is gonna go for texting, for Instagram, Twitter, things like that. However, if you wanna send emails directly through Teamsy, you can. If you're a Gmail subscriber, okay? So if you are a Gmail subscriber, you can actually link your Gmail account to Teamsy and it will allow you to send emails accordingly to your customers to your prospects, to your consultants. But what's awesome is that it'll let you save email templates. So if you've got a killer invite to for a product invite or event invite or you know anything like that, you can preload it into Teamsy and then reuse that moving forward. What you would do in that case, so let's say you wanna link your Gmail. In the upper right-hand corner of your Teamsy, you have a little wheel. If you click there and come down to settings, In the middle, uh, sort of middle left of your screen under the word preferences, you'll see integrations. 
And that's going to give you the option to connect to Gmail. Once you click the blue connect, uh, excuse me, the white connect button here, it's just going to basically hold your hand and walk you through that connection. Super simple. You're just making sure that you're logged into the right Gmail account and then you can send emails moving forward. All right. So now that we've talked through some of the major features that you should focus on when you're doing your power hours, I want to talk about following up because I talked a little bit about how you track your follow-ups right from the dashboard and how you track your follow-ups if you're getting set up so that you can just kind of alter someone's record. But let's say that um, you know that you need to connect with Carrie on next Saturday. So you can always search for a person using the search contact at the top of the field, um, excuse me, at the top of your page. So I can start typing a name and it brings up, um, it's, you can search by first or last name and it will auto-populate. I can select the contact that I'd like to edit, and then that brings me to their full profile that we were used to seeing earlier. If you come down to follow-up line, I can actually alter, okay, you know what, I need to follow up with her uh, next Tuesday. That becomes the person's active follow-up. Now, every time I create a custom follow-up, okay, any follow-ups outside of that 30, 60, 90, or 120 days, like when I came in and I said, you know what, I want to follow up with William tomorrow. Those are all available for me on my follow-ups list from my dashboard. So every day when I log in, I know that, okay, I have my prospects to connect with, I have my customers and my consultants, but then I also have pending follow-ups that I personally set. So this is going to list for you every follow-up that you have for that day. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you come in uh, for the day, you'll notice that there's going to be a little um, notification bubble here. So it'll say to you, okay, you've got one, uh, you've got one follow-up today, or you've got two follow-ups. So that as you build that habit of knowing to check on your follow-ups and things like that, you know you have the notification that'll remind you. So it arranges your follow-ups by urgency. So past due versus due today and things like that. Um, they're going to be color-coded. Red is going to be past due and due today. Yellow will be uh, pending. And then you've got green for things that are further out. Okay. If you're someone that's getting started with like tons of follow-ups to start with, if you've been getting and using that feature a lot and you're thinking to yourself, Jay, I have way more than five follow-ups. Okay, to access your full list of follow-ups, head over to your team page on the left. This is gonna be your team page. You should think of it as everything like Cross everything contact related. So if I want to see a list of my contacts, if I want to uh, see my tags, if I want to alter a follow-up, head over to your team page. Okay, from the team page, I can now see a list of my contacts that currently have follow-ups set. Middle left here, you've got team members, and then you've got follow-ups. If you come down to follow-ups, you can click on upcoming, and this will actually list for you, again, based on urgency, all of your, your up-to-date follow-ups. So this will give you a full year's list, excuse me, a full list of your year-to-date follow-ups. That was never gonna come up. Okay, so if you're thinking, Jay, I've got way more than five, why does the dashboard only show me five? Head over to the team page and then upcoming under follow-ups. And that'll be how you access your full list. Now, if you have someone on the list that you're thinking, oh, you know what, Marlo reached out and let me know the ninth is not gonna work. So I can click on his name, this becomes his profile. I would come over to his follow-up line again and say, okay, you know what, he said the 10th is better. That now becomes Marlo's new follow-up. Again, automatically saving, allowing me to just keep moving. So that's gonna be how you set and monitor your follow-ups in Teensy. We talked about creating tags earlier. You'll notice that earlier, a moment ago, I clicked on upcoming under follow-ups. You can also sort your lists by tagged item. So if you want to see everyone that you've tagged as Facebook, you can click on Facebook. Or let's say, you know what, Marlo, I'm adding him to my, uh, I don't know, three-way call, okay? So now I've created a tag for three-way call, and I might create one for event uh, Los Angeles. And then I might create, so you're going to create as many or as few as you need. Uh, at any point, I can click on and I can see, you know what, let me see who's in the event LA group, or let me see who's in the three-way call group. This is a really great way to create campaign lists or a focus list that you're going to, or target list that you're going to use for marketing or anything like that. So keep in mind that you have that tagging option, as many or as few as you need for contact. Alrighty, so this is the perfect place to open up the Florida questions that you guys may have specifically. So please jump in the question and answer, should be right or left of your screen. 
Um, and then if you can't access the question and answer for whatever reason, jump in the chat and I will check there also. Okay, so for those of you that stuck with me, thank you so much. If you have to jump off the call right now, I am gonna share with you my contact info so that you can reach out if you have any questions along the way. Alrighty, so those questions are up, uh, excuse me, that information's up on the screen now. Feel free to grab a screenshot. You can share that with anyone on your team that may need to reach out. Okay, just another minute on that and then I'll pull it down and get into the questions. Again, like I said, Q&A should be right or left of your screen depending on the browser that you're using. And then if all else fails, jump in the chat. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Alrighty, I'll put that back up um, at the end of the call. Let's get in here. All right, so I think I addressed this one earlier, but just to, to kind of go over it, it's a good one. Um, so uh, Katie wants to know, are the connects per day for seven days per week or Monday through Friday weekdays? Okay, so your daily goals are per day on a seven day week cycle, okay? So it's gonna reset, mo it's Monday through Friday, oh, excuse me, Monday through Sunday, it's gonna reset on Sunday, okay? So that's gonna be how your goals are displayed on your dashboard. Um, okay, so Tracy wants to know, my why is in the bottom box of the why page, but does not appear on my homepage in the left column. Okay, so in that case, there might be a bug, okay? But just to go over that really quickly, if you're thinking there's nothing appearing in my why section, click on the little wheel in the upper right-hand corner and go to setup wizard. Or you can just click on let's go do this now under the my why on the left. <clears throat> Pardon me. So once you hit continue, you're gonna be on the page where you've answered the questions. If you get to the bottom and you really have filled in this whole paragraph and it's there, what might be happening is you need to hit continue and then save and exit right here. So hit continue once and then save and exit on the next page and that should get you squared away. Otherwise, reach out to me directly and I'll take a look at what's going on. Okay, uh, so Nella wants to know, I did Facebook first um, a few days ago. Okay, so that happens a lot. We have people that get started right away, they imported their Facebook to start, and now they wanna either undo it, or is that a big deal? It's not, it, it's not gonna be anything earth shattering, okay? The reason I recommended that order is because of the duplicate filter. I want you to keep more of that great information that you've collected from your back office, from your custom spreadsheets, from your email services before you keep anything from a Facebook profile, it's basically just gonna be first and last name, okay? So if you got in the system and you added your Facebook file first, but you wanna undo that, you wanna kinda of walk that back and start over. You have access to delete or wipe out any imports that you bring into the system. To do that, you're gonna click on team on the left-hand side. And now in the upper left-hand-ish corner, you've got an import dropdown. And then come down to import history. This import history is really cool because it's gonna give you an itemized list of every single person, um, excuse me, of every single file that you've imported into TeamZ. So I can say, you know what, I wanna delete this. So you just click delete import and then you can go back to the import process and import in the right order, okay? If you wanna just walk me through it, if you wanna just kinda of bounce it off me and make sure that you're doing it the right way, just go ahead and reach out to me and I'd be happy to, um, to, to walk you through that and, and confirm for you that you're doing everything right. Okay, let's see here. Um, if I started a 30-day trial and only imported Facebook contacts, would it be best to just start over and import everything in order you recommended? Um, so it is absolutely super simple to start over with those contacts. If you've done a, a bunch of different files, if you wanna just wipe everything, you know, without you having to go in there, send me an email and I can do a wipe on my end and you'll just start fresh. Um, or check out that import history and you can delete one at a time. Okie doke, uh, so let's take a look here. Um, so Katie wants to know, if you don't hit your target of connects one day, do you have the option to get caught up? Like if you miss four, will I come in the next day and just sort of pick up where you left off? So TeamZ does not accumulate or add, like if I had eight prospect connections left for today, it wouldn't say tomorrow that I have 18. It's just gonna start over. Every day you have 10, uh, you have this many connections to hit. If you do not meet those connections for the day, they don't cycle over or roll over into the next day. It's just gonna, you're gonna wake up the next morning, open your dashboard, and it's gonna have started fresh, okay? Um, let's see here. Uh, so Missy wants to know, how do you delete a tag? Okay, we're gonna head over to the team page. 
From here along the middle left there where I showed you, you can click on your tag. So if I wanted to see all of my, you know, my three-way call tag or what have you. <clears throat> if I wanted to edit this or delete it outright, to the right of the title of the tag at the very top, once you've clicked on it, you've got tag options. This will let you edit your tag or delete it completely. Okay, so that's how we delete tags. Let's see here. So Sarah wants to know how many Rodan and Fields consultants do we have using Teamsy at this point? Um, the number is, it's, it escapes me right now. It's, um, I believe we're almost at 5,000 trial users, I want to say, um, but that might be wrong. So I can, I can confirm for you. <laughs> okay, so Rachel wants to know, uh, what do you mean by connects with consultants? Not sure why I would need to log connects with fellow consultants or why that would be important. Um, okay. So, um, so connecting with your consultants allows you to create a great culture on your team. Uh, just, you know, checking in with them, making sure that they have everything that they need as far as resources so they can continue to build their team. Um, when you pour into your team, you get more out of them. Okay, that's, that's just how it works. So if you are spending some time uh, connecting with them consistently, making sure that they can see uh, that you're remaining consistent in your business. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard the phrase, it's at the speed of the leader. Uh, these people chose for you to guide them on this journey. So a lot of times you need to, you need to remain consistent and in their lives and, and available so that if they ever need to reach out for help, uh, you're there. So that's going to be what your consultant connections are uh, kind of driving you to, is, is building a great environment and culture for your team. Uh, let's see here. Uh, are there any discounts or is it $24.99 per month if you pay for the year up front? Okay, so cost for Teamsy. Whenever you are ready to select your subscription, it's going to be right in your Teamsy. In the upper right-hand corner, you have a little wheel. If you click the little wheel and come down to settings, this will give you access to your preferences again. And you'll go to, <coughs> excuse me, you will come down to billing. This page will actually list for you exactly when your trial will end. So you know that, ex <coughs> that expected date. And then if you scroll down far enough, it gives you the monthly versus the annual subscription. So Teamsy is $29.99 per month. That is going to be no contract base. You can cancel at any time in that membership, um, excuse me, in that subscription. And then we've got our annual subscription. The annual option saves you $60 up front because you're purchasing the full year in advance. So with that, it actually breaks down to about $24.99 per month, but you do pay for the full annual cost up front. So you can choose to take that $60 savings and then keep in mind that Teamsy is a 100% business write-off. Okay, let's see here. Um, after the 30 days, do you contact us um, so that we can start paying so you don't lose all of the information? So you're not going to lose all of your information at any point, okay? Teamsy is going to automatically save your information to our secure server. So if at any point you need to give yourself a day or if you decided to sign up the day after your trial, you can always click on the wheel, go to billing, and set up your subscription when you are ready. You will pick up where you left off in your trial. Okay, let's see here. Now, that's not to say that you might not get a phone call from me. Uh, I like to reach out and just make sure our users are getting everything that they can out of the system. So if you get a, call, a phone call from me, you know that um, I'm just kind of doing the rounds. All righty. Um, so Jen wants to know, are there instructions for importing Gmail and other email accounts onto the Teamsy site? Um, so, there, so we don't have the instructions listed here. Um, excuse me, listed. So in your setup wizard what, that we were going through earlier, okay, so when you come to the import page for setup, um, you're going to notice it gives you instructions or an instruction video for your pulse contacts, Facebook, and any other CSV files. But let's say uh, like in the scenario you need Gmail or you need LinkedIn. A really great resource for you is your university tab along the left-hand side. If you click on university, once you click on university, you can select FAQs by your network, okay? So you'd come over to FAQs for Rodan and Fields. And this is going to list for you different tutorial videos, step-by-step uh, -step instructions, things like that. So if you need LinkedIn or you need Gmail, those are gonna be listed in one of these articles. Or you can just send me an email at the end of this call and I'll, I'll respond with those instructions for you right away. Okay, let's see here. Um, so Heather is saying that she's, uh, she doesn't see the option to import her email contacts. 
So depending on the email server that you're using, um, if it's Gmail, if it's Outlook, you would export your list, just like you exported your contacts from Pulse. And then once you've got that file, you're gonna come over to, you're gonna click on your team page, and then in the upper left-hand corner, you've got import with the little drop-down menu. Import contacts, and then you are in business to import any CSV file that you'd like, okay? Um, if you need additional help with your email service, reach out to me directly. Um, so if I set up my 30-day trial a couple of months ago and never did anything further, can I reset my trial? So Missy, go ahead and reach out to me. I do want you to absolutely be sure and in love with the system before you commit, so reach out and I'll get you all set up, okay? All right, uh, so Emily wants to know what is the default follow-up time? I have several pending product customers who have already decided what they want and are saving for a purchase. They are clogging up my follow-up list because I don't need to contact them as often as someone. Okay, so in that case, what you wanna do is actually alter their follow-up to be a custom date. So I'm going to skip the wizard and we're gonna go back into Teamsy. So let's say, for example, Christy is, uh, so let's say Rena keeps coming up on my customer list and it's, you know, she's getting in the way of my other follow-up cycling through. So in this case, what I would do because Rena is saving for a purchase in a month, I can actually click on Rena's name here. This brings up her profile. So now if I know that Rena, I want to connect with her in one month's time, I would click the drop down here, come to custom date and say, you know what, I'm going to follow up with her September 1. That now becomes her active default follow-up. If I go back to my dashboard, if I go back to my dashboard and click on the customer list, I'm gonna notice that Rena is no longer on that customer list, but if I click on my custom follow-up list, there she is with the actual date that I need to follow up. So if there's someone that you feel like their default is just getting in the way, then go ahead and alter it to a custom follow-up and it'll move them out of the way and in, onto a list that you can kind of sort or filter, okay? And just a little reminder, if you're wondering what are the default follow-ups, how often? Right uh, to the right of the words, who's up next here on the dashboard, you have the little tiny question mark. If you click there, that's gonna give you that breakdown. Okay, let's see here. Um, so Joanne, I have already entered my Facebook and Gmail contacts. I have logged a bunch of stuff in Teamsy, so will it be messy for me at some point to add a customized spreadsheet of people? It will not. And in your case, it's going to then, um, it'll be, those files will already have great information. You will, you'll have tracked your notes and added your follow-ups and your connections. So you want to keep that record. You want anything else to be deemed as a duplicate. So feel free to keep working in Teamsy. And then when you're ready to bring in that custom spreadsheet, you can. Teamsy will search for any duplicates and it'll bring in only brand new people. Okay, so you'll still have those great records that you've been accumulating and adding notes to and things like that. Alrighty, uh, let's see. So Missy, uh, what is the security for all of our contact information that will be housed in Teamsy? So Teamsy is housed on, on uh, backup servers by Unique Network. So you guys are housed on a Beachbody server, uh, so all of your information is saved. We have created a security page for you because we do know that your database is your bread and butter. Okay, this is actually your business. So in that, you should know that no one here on staff will be mining your lists uh, for marketing purposes. We do not have access to any of your information unless you reach out for assistance. So if you reach out to me for help, then as a support rep, I can absolutely con uh, reach into your contacts and help with that. Um, but at no point are we, like I said, farming or mining your lists for contacts. If you would like more information on your security protocols, go over to Teamsy dot com forward slash security and this will bring up for you all of the protocols that we have in place for protecting your data encryptions um, where our secure data servers are and all of the you know all the questions that you might not even be thinking of yet are, are on that security page for you so check that out uh, let's see here Um, so Tiffany wants to know, what if you try to get your Facebook friends emailed, but you never received the email? Thank you so much for reminding me, Tiffany. So this is something that is plaguing quite a few of our users. 
What's going on is that Facebook, okay, even the big guys, Facebook is going through some growing pains. They're adjusting the way that some of us can pull our data, but not everyone. So if you are in a situation that sounds anything like Tiffany's, where you requested your data more than a day ago and it never came in, you just never got the follow-up email, not to worry, it's not you, it's them, okay? What you want to do is go back to your Facebook. I'm going to show you in real time. Back in Facebook, in the upper right-hand corner, you've got that little carrot icon. You're going to click there and come down to settings. Once you come down to settings, it's going to give you your general account settings list. Again, this will look familiar to you if you've already gone through this process to request the data once. You're going to click download a copy again. Only this time, instead of it saying start my archive in green, it's going to say download my archive. So what happened is Facebook skipped a step. They didn't inform you. They just dropped your file right into your Facebook account. It's waiting for you. So if you go back to the settings area, download a copy again, you'll see download my archive. Click download my archive and the file will pop right into your, uh, right onto your computer or into your downloads folder. Okay, so that's my one workaround for Facebook right now. If you've been waiting any more than a day, honestly guys, it shouldn't take any more than one hour's time. If you've been waiting more than one hour, go back to your Facebook settings and you might just be uh, pleasantly surprised that it's waiting for you. Any other challenges, reach out to me and I'll get in there and figure out what's going on. All righty. Um, okay, so Emily wants to know, is there a way to remove someone from the follow-ups list and get them back like in the default window, like just back into the prospect cycle? Yes. So if we head back over to Teamsy, let's say that I have a custom follow-up right now from Marlo. But you know, um, instead I just want to put Marlo back in the default. You know, I want to connect with him 30 days from the last time that I connected with him. So in this case, I would click on Marlo. Then I'll click on his name so that I go to his full profile. From the full profile in the follow-up line, I'm actually going to click the drop down and select default. That just automatically wipes out the custom follow-up that I had. It puts him back in the cycle so that I will connect with him 30 days from the last point of communication. Okay? So go back to the person's profile and reselect default from the follow-up drop down. Okay, Michelle wants to know if we have any plans on an iOS app. We do, we hope to have one in the future, but I do not have a promised timeline um, or, or any idea of when you can expect that. Uh, for now, however, you do have access to our really great mobile site, okay? So you can access everything Teamsy related from your, uh, from your mobile device. We are always working on this just to kind of refine it. I know that there are some um, instances of using a mobile site that can uh, hiccup on you, but we're always adjusting that. So please don't quit on it. You know, get back in your mobile site. I promise you um, it will work. So what I did is if you're, so you do have the option to use Teamsy on the go. You would open up your desired browser on your uh, mobile device. So whether that be uh, Google Chrome or Safari, you would open it up and type what you see in my browser now app.teamsy.com. So the word app.teamsy.com. Once you've done that, I'm actually just going to show you really quickly. So on my, uh, so what I did is I added Teamsy to my home screen. So if I tap on that, it's actually going to load my Teamsy dashboard so that I can go down and see who do I need to connect with today? What have I done so far? What have, what have I accomplished on my dashboard? That kind of thing. So you do have access to that on the go. You're just gonna add that to your, um, excuse me, to your home screen. If you need help with doing that, you can always reach out. Um, but we are, we are definitely, uh, the, conversa the larger conversation has started as far as how we can get a native app employed for you guys. Um, and we will keep you updated when we have more um, information on that. Okie doke, let's see here. Uh, so Missy wants to know, if we don't contact the individuals that come up on the daily list, do they move back into a rotation to come back up? What is the algorithm for the client coming back up? Okay, so the algorithm, again, is going to be based only on their, is going to be based on their priority. So are they a five-star, four-star, three-star, and their last point of communication? So in this case, if, let's say, I'm finished connecting for the day, and Christy would be my next prospect. When I log in tomorrow, Christy will be the next person up for follow-up. So it's not that it rearranges the list and certain people just fall through the cracks. I just chip away at my list little by little. So your effort is what dictates how many people get connected with on a daily basis. Okay? So know that if you, if you choose to stop connecting, you know, if you finish your goals and the next thing that comes up on the list will be the next one that comes up tomorrow when you log in. 
Okay. Um, so I think that's everything that was in the question and answer section. You guys feel free to jump in there and ask any more questions you might have. Um, I do want to show you a few more features, so I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna keep going. You guys feel free to jump in the question and answer and ask any more that you might have. Okay, so if we are um, so in Teamsy, we started all of this by creating an income goal. Right? So it's going to be important that you actually track against that income goal so that you know how close you are to meeting it. So in this case, you're going to head over to your business tab on the left hand side. As you begin to accumulate or earn interest, excuse me, <laughs> or earn income, you're going to go ahead and track that income on your business page. It's going to unfold for you business statistics. So I can click here where it says income and I'll see, okay, my goal is $100,000 and within the circle that lets me know how much I've actually uh, tracked as income. So I've tracked about 12,000 toward my goal of $100,000. I can click the little plus symbol here and it brings up an itemized income report. So I can say, you know what, I made $150 between the first and, uh, well, between the 30th and the first and the first. So now once I add that income, that adds as a line record. So that at any point, if I want to pull this report, I can actually see an itemized list of all of the income that I earned by date range. Okay. So this also goes for those of you that might want to track uh, monthly or uh, bi-monthly or quarterly. You can always come in here and just say, I made such and such amount between this time and this time. And that's how you're going to track your income. <clears throat> Other business statistics that the system is keeping track of are going to be your uh, total number of personally sponsored customers and consultants. If you come down far enough on this page, you've got your growth report. So this is going to break down for you how you've grown each category, your consultants versus your customers. Coming down far enough, we have an activity report. So this is going to give you your activities completed by um, prospect, by customer and consultant month to month. And then you've got your ratios broken down connects to sales, sales to consultant, and all time connects. So the last thing that I want to mention that is awesome are going to be your reporting options. So if at any point you want to see everyone that you've sent um, a three-way call invite to, or if you want to see only the people that you sent a solution tool invite to, you can actually filter this list. And then the system will render for you only the people that fit that criteria. And then you can export that report to an Excel spreadsheet so that if any, you know, for any of my pen and paper guys and gals that are sort of weaning themselves off of it, you've got an option here to always, you know, pull what you've completed for the day and you can do a check, check, check. It's up to you. All right. So those are going to be your business statistics in a nutshell. As you're getting more familiar with the system, I definitely recommend that you check out that university tab. We're always doing our best to update that with tutorial videos, webinars, uh, things that we think would be particularly beneficial for you getting started and uh, just maximizing on the system. If there's something in, that you need help with that's not in that list and you misplaced my phone number or you're not sure of what my name even was, <laughs> not to worry. We built a help button right in your Teamsy, okay? Lower right hand corner of that page, you have got a direct line to our help staff. I'm them too. <laughs> so my colleague, Barry and myself are more than glad to help. Please feel free to reach out. We do our best to respond really, really quickly. Um, and then if you have any feedback for us, if you think, you know, I'd love to see more of this, less of this, you have a feedback tool in the upper right hand corner of your Teams. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and check the chat and the Q&A one last time, and then I'll put my contact information up as you go. I truly appreciate your time tonight. I hope it was helpful. All right, guys, I've got a question from Jen. Is there a way to search for duplicates once the team is loaded, or should I delete and start all over? So there's no way to like search for it to bring up for you who's a duplicate, but here's a tip. If you go over to your team page, and let's say I'm viewing all, so every single person, whether they were manually added or imported, every single name, what I can do is I can actually sort this alphabetically. So let's say I do it by first name. And you know what, I'll add a duplicate. Okay, 
So if I'm on my all list and I select to, to sort this by first name, it's now going to sort this alphabetically by first name. So if I go down this list, it will have merged or put together records that look similar. And this is happening just because they're alphabetical and the letters are the same. So what you can do is go down and say, oh, okay, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a duplicate here. This one's a five star. Looks like I've connected on this one. If I click here, I don't have any information. I don't have any notes, any activity. Or you might need to copy and paste from one and bring it over to the other. But this is the simplest way to identify if you have duplicates is to kind of look at the full list and then wait for the, the names that are similar to sort of merge up on the list or end up close to each other. Okay, so that's my one recommendation there. Uh, we do plan uh, to have a more comprehensive deduper in the future, but for now, that's going to be the best workaround. Uh, so Michelle wants to know how do you add the Teamsy? Uh, how do you add Teamsy to your homepage on your phone? So this is going to be a little bit different for different phones. If you're an iPhone user, I'm going to do this one really quickly. So let's say that. I'm going to stop that share. Okay, so let's say I have logged into app.teamz.com. Okay, what you see in my browser. I've logged in, I'm on my dashboard. Below your actual window, you'll see, you'll see some options to go back, to go forward, and you've got a little share box. Uh, looks like a little rectangle with an arrow pointing up. If you tap that, it's going to bring up two menus. You wanna scroll the bottom menu until you see add to home screen, okay? Don't know if my glare is gonna let me. Sorry, the AirPlay is not working on my device right now. So if you were to hit add to home screen, it'll let you go ahead and add that. If you need more help after tonight, you can always reach out to me and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so when you start, um, you already have PCs and Cs. Uh, will that fill in automatically on the business page? So Anne, your, uh, your preferred customers and your consultants, that number on the business page is coming from, so let me, Okay, so right now, <clears throat> for example, in this account, my business page says that I have three total customers and zero consultants. So it's pulling these numbers from who I have um, sort of uh, designated as a customer or a consultant here. So if I click on customers, I have three. If I click on consultants, I have, <clears throat> it's, whoa. This may be a duplicate that's happening here. So it should be just the three in my customer list and then I'll have under consultants, it's because these are all currently not listed as personally sponsored. So if you go to your business page and you're thinking, why aren't my consultants listed? It could be that they're listed as consultants, but they're not personally sponsored. So you might have to go in and just say, okay, they're personally sponsored. Laura is personally sponsored and Melanie is personally sponsored. So if I go over to my business tab now, you'll see that it's updated. Okay, I've got three personally sponsored consultants now and I've got three customers. So the, um, your business page statistics are being pulled from your team designations, okay? So pull up the contact. If they're listed as a customer, then they're listed toward your customer goal. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, so I think that's everything as far as questions are concerned. I'm gonna check out the chat really quickly. Um, okay, so Tracy wants to know if, uh, can you find or go back to people you've deleted um, if you, if you remove them by mistake? So that has to be restored by us here in-house. So go ahead and reach out to me directly if you do, if you realize, okay, I deleted someone permanently that I didn't mean to. Um, just keep in mind that the, the delete is permanent in Teamsy unless we restore it for you. So you can always reach out. We'd be happy to help, um, but there's not a restore right in your Teamsy right now. Um, I believe that's everything that I'm seeing come in through the chat and the Q&A. Um, that's everything that I've got for you guys. If you have any questions, if you need any help, please feel free to reach out to me along the way. Otherwise, we hope that you absolutely love Teensy. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Thanks so much for being here, I appreciate you.